Hey, good evening. It's Thursday, March 14th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. We're continuing to look at Ephesians under the theme of Paul wants us to know God better in all that we do. We have the doctrinal section, the foundation laid out in the first three chapters, and now he gives to the, goes to the implication, the application of living as someone who is worthy of the calling that we've been received. That's verse 1 of chapter 4. And then he describes how we're to be grow, growing and building up each other in the body of Christ. Then he talks about how we came to know Christ in a way differently than the world did. And we need to start putting on this new person that we are in Christ and put off the flesh, the old ways, the old habits. So we don't look like the world, so we don't live like the world being slaved to our desires, but being slaves to the beauty and wonder of the person of Christ. So that's what's being talked about here. And then in verses 25 through 32, Paul gives some very practical ways that we could be different. Verse 25, remember he tells us to speak the truth so we can build one another up. And then we're just looking at anger. Don't be ruled by anger. Keep your mouth shut in the right way and consider how your anger could be a gift. And let your silent anger be a blessing. Not a passive anger, but a silent anger. The blessing of silent anger because that could use our energy to move us in the direction that we need to go. Verse 28 he says, put off the stealing, and I'm not going to deal with that verse in, in very much detail, because it's, it's, again, there's a rich history behind that too, but basically he's just saying, leave that idea of caring for yourself and stealing, and start caring for others. And then that builds a segue to verse 29, what we're looking at tonight, where you begin to use your words to care for others. Listen to what Paul says. I'm going to read from the um, um, Legacy Standard Bible. Just come across this kind of recently. I like it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good translation. Um, it's more of a word-for-word, -word, literal translation. But it has some, it reads well. So I'm going to use that tonight. Particularly, it's very helpful here for Ephesians 4.29. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only... Such a word as is good for building, well, so such a word as for good for building up according to what is needed, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Instead of using language to satisfy our desires and lusts, we need to use our words to build up the people that we're talking to so that they're strengthened. And I'm going to deal with more depth with this verse tomorrow. But this idea of our words, language is a gift to us from God. It's another one of these communicable attributes of God. He didn't have to design us to speak, but he did. We didn't, we're not speaking because of some evolutionary process. God determined that you and I would use words, primarily so we could honor him and bless and honor each other. So this word here, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, it's a gift. Words are a gift. How are we going to use that gift? Just like in 1 Corinthians 6, our bodies are not ours, but they are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We can't use our bodies any way we want to. We use them to bring honor to God. The same thing with our words. Our words are a gift of God to us. Language is a gift of God to us. I'm not free to use it in any way that I want. I'm not free to spew it out in anger or to fulfill my desires or to hurt someone. God gave me language to build up. And tomorrow we're going to look precisely what's being said here about the unwholesome word. The unwholesome word is, is in the Greek, the idea of decaying wood, a rotten word. And it's not just foul language. But it's any word that doesn't build up. And like I said, we'll look at that in more depth tomorrow. If a word does not build up, it's rotten. It doesn't help. It doesn't produce growth, which is what Paul says earlier, 
speaking the truth in love, is how we are to grow. If I use words selfishly, I just get mad, then I'm using language for myself, and I'm not, I don't care about you. I don't care about whether my words will bless you or not and build you up. I just want to get something off my chest, or I just want to put you in your place. You see how ugly that is. God gave us words to build him up, to, bring, to build each other up, and to bring honor to him. That's the purpose of language. And that's what Paul is talking about here. That kind of sets the scene for what we're going to be looking at tomorrow about how our speech, when we use rotten, decaying words to serve our own interest, we don't do any good at all. Rather, our words are a gift. It's like a beautiful flower. And the thumbnail tonight is a beautiful flower of my garden back when I was living in Spartanburg. Those flowers are a gift. This tree blooming behind me, it's a gift. I need to be blown away by it. I need to take these words and treat them as a gift from God and use them to build, to grow, to encourage. If I don't, it's an unwholesome, rotten word. So this is much more than just using language that's off. This is about using language, the gift that God's given us, to build each other up so that they can receive grace and we're all strengthened together. Your words, they're a beautiful gift from God. And that's the thought for this day. Thanks so much for being here, and uh, Lord willing, we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Such a blessing to talk with you each day. Good night. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.